The unsurpassed penetrating and perfect truth is seldom met with, even in a hundred thousand myriad capitals. Now we can see and hear it, and remember and accept it. I vow to make the Buddha's truth one with myself. Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha. Good morning. Nice to see all of you. Um, I think this is going to be a short talk because Jukai starts today and Master Mayon's giving a talk this evening. Um, and uh, the three things I'm going to talk about are confidence, humility, and fearlessness. And um, because it's a short talk, I'm just going to do a little bit about each one of those because you could do a full talk on each one of them. So, um, so they're just uh, things that I've been thinking about. And also, we were given a beautiful st gift of a statue. If you haven't seen it back there, you know, I would suggest to do so because um, it's just beautiful. Okay, so confidence, humility, and fearlessness are three very important qualities of training and practice to work on and develop, something we all can do. And they are, in fact, real anchors in our lives. Um, so I looked up uh, confidence in the dictionary. Um, and some of the meetings were good. Some of them were, I think, the kind of confidence we don't really want to work on and develop. But, but the ones that I liked is it, for confidence, it said firm belief, trust, reliance. I really like the word reliance. Um, and then it, then it also a little further down said belief in one's own abilities because I think that's important. You know, we all have abilities and qualities and we're good people. Um, so confidence in Buddhism is both about self-confidence and confidence, confidence in something bigger. You need both kinds of confidence. Okay. Some Buddhists prefer to substitute uh, the word confidence for belief or faith. It just works better for them. Rather than saying, I believe or have faith in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, they prefer to see it as confidence in the three treasures. For me, the main point is that I have faith and confidence in something bigger than me, which I am a part of, not separate from. I think self-confidence is good and helpful. When it starts creating a bigger and bigger me, okay, um, that kind of confidence gets in the way of our training. Okay, again, there, there, there's something bigger than me, which I am a part of, that I trust in, believe in, and have confidence in. Remember Master Jiyu often said, referring to herself, she'd say, I am not the cosmic Buddha, and there is nothing in me that is not of the cosmic Buddha. The triple gem will not fail us. It's a true refuge. Proper or right confidence is not cocky, proud, or self-absorbed. When I was an athlete, uh, you know, really cocky people. I mean, it's one thing to have a swagger, you know, uh, and self-confidence, but when you're cocky, I don't know. I always find that a little hard. Um, I ran across this from the Dalai Lama. He says that love brings self-confidence. Anger brings fear. Self-confidence comes from generosity. Thinking and caring about others. That's what brings confidence. It's kind of not what we thought. We thought we had to do something to be confident. And then we could do the other things. But it's actually um, practicing those things. The Dalai Lama calls self-confidence heart warmedness. He also says that kindness and compassion give rise to self-confidence, which in turn empowers us to be honest, truthful, and transparent. So it's not like we have to be confident first before we can practice kindness, compassion, and generosity. 
we can just practice those right away. And they give us amazing results. Buddha's confidence is free from arrogance and pride. It's not a big self. The best kind of confidence, I think, is a quiet confidence, a steadiness in training, not too up, not too down. Um, it lightens our load, this kind of confidence. And you just get on with doing what needs to be done. That's, that's the confidence, okay? No big fuss, no dramatics. It's not like you have to know all the answers. Good luck. Um, you just take it one step at a time. Um, you pay attention and you do the practice, moment by moment. So the longer, for myself, the longer that I live in practice, I seem to know less. I mean, I just said, I, said, I have all this knowledge, you know. Um, it's, it's not like I don't, excuse me, it's not like I don't know anything. Uh, that would be false humility. The thing is, knowing wasn't what I thought it was. Okay? I was kind of mistaken in the beginning. Real knowledge is the knowing of the heart, a little different than head knowledge. So a while ago, someone said to me, you, you have the big picture. And I thought about it, and, and I thought, actually, I don't. <laughs> um, I kind of make it up as I go. I, I don't know about you all, but you know, life, a lot comes at you, and um, it's not like you control everything. Sometimes my, my mind wonders how I'm going to do something. You know, how, how am I, I going to get through this? I don't know how to do it, you know. There's a lot going on, you know. Um, after some thought, I make a bit of a plan. Plans are good, you know. But hard, set plans, you know, that are going to be the solution, I don't know. It doesn't kind of work that way. Um, mostly, I try not to worry. I put my energy into staying calm and being flexible. Um, you know, things work out. Um, I have full confidence that my Buddhist practice is the direction I want to go. The Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha are my refuge. In the end, I'm the one who is responsible for my decisions on the road of practice. Okay, so what I do, I take full responsibility for. No one moves my feet for me. I move my own feet. I go in my own direction. Um, you know, we're the owners of our karma. Okay, so that's my little bit about confidence. So obviously, you could say a lot more. Um, humil humility, again, I looked it up in the dictionary, is defined as the absence of pride or self-assertion. Self-assertion being the act of demanding recognition for oneself or insisting upon one's rights and claims. Okay, so it's, um, a humble person is often actually self-effacing, which, according to the dictionary, is the practice of keeping oneself in the background. I kind of like that, you know, to keep yourself in the background, because the tendency can be to, you know, keep pushing yourself out there, but you, you can keep yourself in the, in the back down. You, you, you don't need to play it up big, okay? Just like with proper confidence, there is no big self there that constantly needs feeding and watering. There's no need to put ourselves down. You know, that's, um, that's not the way to do it. You just don't need to make a big deal about the self. Um, you can have real confidence in yourself and be humble. Again, we realize that it's all so much bigger than us. The Dalai Lama says, I am just one of, often says, I am just one of the how, however many, I think it's billions of people there are on the earth. Okay? Nothing, he's nothing special. Doesn't profess to be something special. He's just one of the people. Um, Reverend Master Jiu, towards the end of her life, would often say, What do I know? You know? And it wasn't because she didn't know anything, but it's like, it's bigger, you know? And as you get closer, to death, it's bigger. Um, and she'd also say, it's enough for me to know the cosmic Buddha. 
So, so for her, that was the real knowing, to know the cosmic Buddha. Reverend Master Ji uh, said also that great Master Do Dogen, towards the end of his life, would say that all I know is that on a face, there are two eyes and a nose. <laughs> I don't know how he came up with that, but, um, but you know, he's, he's obviously making a, mis a statement that, you know, what do I know? <laughs> We're, we're really lucky to have examples like Reverend Master Jiyu and the Dalai Lama and, and Great Master Dogen. Very confident and yet humble people. They do the daily training, just ordinary people like you and me. People not caught up in the game of gain and loss. So that's my bit on humility. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about fearlessness. So we were just given this lovely statue back uh, uh, to the right of the Achalanatha shrine. Um, and when you look at the Buddha there, so the Buddha's got both hands up. That's the, the, the double Abhaya mudra. Abhaya means fearlessness. Um, so you, you, and then on the altar here, the Buddha ha is holding the right hand, I think it is. Yeah, it's right hand. In the single Abhaya mudra, okay? So I, I just, you know, look these up a bit to find out what was the difference and how, how did they rise and what circumstances in the Buddha's life. So the single Abhaya Mudra, that's one hand out, okay, Buddha on the main altar, represents protection, peace, benevolence, and the dispelling of fear. So the story goes that the Buddha's cousin, Devadatta, became increasingly jealous of the Buddha. This is something that went on since their childhood um, I think, unfortunately, Devadatta got kind of dumped on and discouraged at certain points, but, but, he, but he carried it with him. Um, and he became very jealous of the Buddha and, because the Buddha was well-known and well-respected at his time. And Devadatta kind of launched this plan to um, get rid of the Buddha and take over the Sangha. And unfortunately, he went so far as to try to kill the Buddha sometimes, a number of times. One of these times, he, um, he got an elephant. I think this was an elephant that had a bit of a temper. Um, and, and I mean, he, off, he awfully, he fed the elephant alcohol, okay, and it, it enraged the elephant. Um, and and um, then he took the elephant to where the Buddha was, or maybe he did this close to where the Buddha was. And so the Buddha started, the, Elephants started coming at the Buddha. I mean, elephants are big. And the Buddha raised one hand and he um, had thoughts of loving kindness. Okay, so the elephant comes pretty close to him and he senses the loving kindness from the Buddha. And, and the elephant just goes down on his knees and bows to the Buddha. So the Buddha was safe. You know, this it didn't work, you know, Devadatta's plan. Okay, so, but that's. That's where some people say the single Abhaya um, mudra comes from. And in actual fact, those mudras were in Indian culture from way back. You know, they, they preceded Buddhism. It, it was kind of a, a, a mudra of fr friendliness. It means you weren't armed. I mean, especially if you've got both, both hands up, you can't, maybe you've got a gun or a sword or something hidden somewhere, but it's hidden. But anyway. Um, so that's the single Abhaya Mudra. Okay, so the, the double Abhaya Mudra, which is what we have in the statue uh, in the back, um, is both hands up, okay? And it's sometime ca sometimes called the Mudra of calming the ocean. And the story goes that the Buddha was wandering, teaching, and he came to these fire worshipers, and I think he may have offered some teaching to them. Um, and they offered him a place to stay for the night, uh, which was right near a river, um, and uh, for the Buddha to sleep. So the Buddha, you know, settles down, and then all of a sudden he hears that the river is rising, you know, and, and really rising and, and starting to go over his banks. And so that's when he did the double Abhaya Mudra and it stopped the flood. 
So needless to say, uh, the fire worshipers um, were to become his disciples because, <laughs> you know, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, so, so that's the double um, by a mudra, but, but it's, you know, it's, it's really um, a mudra of, you know, real intense protection. Um, so we're probably not going to experience anything like this in our lifetime. I don't think we're going to uh, stop the, the flood. I don't know if I mentioned this, because my mind's going on me a little bit here. But the double Abhaya Mudra is called calming the ocean. Now, why they didn't call it calming the river, I don't know. But, you know, it's a body of water, so it's called calming the ocean. Um, but, but we're not going to probably experience an elephant, you know, that we can calm down or a flood that we can uh, stop. Uh, but uh, what we all experience in, in our lives is fear. Okay? Um, it's just a common human thing. I mean, it goes back to when, uh, when we were in the animal state. Okay? Fear, fear is not in itself a problem. It can be a protection. It can be a warning. Um, it, it, what it's really all about is what we do with the fear. I mean, do we respond with wisdom and the fear, or do we you know, get in there and just get more and more afraid? Do we freak out? Uh, do we become defensive or angry? Okay? Or do we take refuge in the triple treasure and our meditation practice? Because those are things in the midst of fear that allow us to just settle. Okay? Uh, uh, and the fact is that we can sit still in life circumstances and find our way through seemingly difficult times. Okay? We all have them. And if we take proper refuge, if we uh, really rely on our meditation, you know, if we rely on the, the triple treasure, um, we can get help. So as our confidence grows in our practice in our, in our own abilities, because again, confidence is both about self-confidence and a bigger confidence. So as these things grow in our practice, and they do, you know, they just quietly, um, consistently go, grow as we practice. So then we know in a humble way that we need not be driven by fear. Okay? That it's just a condition uh, that we need to sit still in and find a wise way to, to practice in. So compassion and loving kindness are the direct antidotes to fear. Compassion and loving kindness. Those are the direct antidotes to fear. Fearlessness is not a macho thing. You know, it's not about getting your testosterone all worked up and I'll conquer the world and nobody, you know, I'll protect everybody and, you know, it's not quite it. Um, fearlessness can be gentle and it can also be firm. And those don't contradict each other, okay? Because there's a time when we have to be firm um, and stand our ground. So through our practice of confidence, humility, and fearlessness, we can offer the world the gift of fearlessness. So, so when you look up about dana, um, fearlessness is one of the forms, the gift of fearlessness is one of the forms of giving, okay? And we can give this to the world, okay? Just by our dealing with fear. Um, and this is actually a very powerful gift that changes the world. So thank you. I hope I was somewhat cognizant. <laughs> thank you.